U.S. Army Harry Diamond Laboratory tested mobile electric power units against air blast. The Naval Surface Warfare Center tested a satellite communications radome for use on ships in a combined thermal and blast environment. They also tested three other antennas, a whip, a wire type, and a satellite communications dish antenna in a combined thermal and blast environment. The U.S. Navy David Taylor Research Center tested several shipboard composite materials that are lighter and stronger than steel, including this composite mast. The United Kingdom fielded several experiments on distant image. The Home Office fielded several expedient closures, one of which is shown here. AWE Foulness fielded NBC clothing on mannequins and a naval shipboard antenna. The AWE equipment was exposed to thermal radiation in addition to the blast. The Norwegian government fielded three experiments, sewer surge tanks, cantilever drag gauges, and a large buried communications shelter that was also tested on the Miser's Gold event. Shown here is the communications shelter. The Canadian National Defense Headquarters fielded six experiments. A ship antenna, SPQ-2D, ship doors, ship's bridge windows, a re-entrant corner, and a naval radome. Canada also fielded a Mark 22 radome and NBC protective equipment on mannequins, shown here at one of the TRS sites. A collaboration consisting of the United Kingdom, Canada, and the U.S. fielded composite graphite reinforced plastic ship superstructure modules to examine response under severe blast loads. The Swiss government fielded three experiments, a buried shelter, three 24-meter-high antennas, and six newly designed microbarographs designed to record low pressures at ranges beyond five kilometers from the detonation. Shown here are the shelter and antennas. The McDonald Ranch is part of the Trinity National Historic Landmark. At a range of about two miles from ground zero, steps are taken to protect it from blast. The roof beams are braced from inside, and the south and west walls are braced to ensure no damage. Glass windows are removed pre-shot, and the openings covered. The lightweight fiberglass hemispherical container shown here was manufactured in segments and assembled at ground zero in early 1991. Here the top is being installed. It was filled with 2,650 tons of ammonium nitrate and fuel oil, or ANFO. Just prior to filling the container, an octal booster is emplaced at the center on the ground. In preparation for the minor scale event in 1985, this plant was built to mix the ammonium nitrate and fuel oil near the test bed. This cut costs and improved ANFO quality. Plant operation and ANFO loading are competitively bid for each event. The large pumping trucks arrive with ammonium nitrate, discharge it into the plant where it is mixed with fuel oil, and then carry the mixture to ground zero and pump it into the container. Temperature inversions and wind shear conditions can focus the blast wave from these sized charges at locations well beyond the range borders. In order to minimize the possibility of window damage in nearby towns, meteorological conditions are closely monitored. This remote station monitors meteorological conditions. The final countdown began the morning of 20 June 1991. The experiments were in place and instrumented. The diagnostics and recording systems had been checked and rechecked. Guests and some experimenters anxiously waited at the observation point. T minus 10 seconds and counting.